Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amy and I am on a financial freedom journey with my family and it is almost the end of 2023 and you know what that means. We are talking 2024, okay? We are in the future. We are talking about 2024. I'm so excited to share in this video my goals, personal and financial, for 2024. I can hardly believe that we are here. Like, it's so crazy to me that I'm talking about 2024 goals already. Like, I feel like we just started 2023. I'm so excited to share my personal and financial goals with you guys. Let's go ahead and get started. I actually just got my 2024 master plan planner. If you guys have been on my channel for a while, I've used master plan for a long time. I am a huge fan. I absolutely love it. I just got this one in the mail literally like a day ago. I am pumped. So I actually have not even had time to write down my goals yet. I have them in my phone. So I will be sharing with you guys um, just verbally and then I will I'm sure at some point share them in my master plan. I'm also planning on filming another vision board video if you guys like those. Um, I'm going to film that probably in the beginning of the year for 2024. So let's go ahead and get started with my goals for 2024. So I'm kind of bringing it back to basics a little bit. I wanted to keep it pretty simple for 2024. If you guys have been on my channel for a while, I always pick a word of the year. So my word of the year for 2023 was commitment, committed, committed. I don't even remember it. It was committed. And I love that word. I thought it was a really good word for me this year. I will do another video reflecting on my 2023 goals as well. Um, this is not that video, so I won't go too much into my 2023 goals, but my 2023 word was committed. And the word that I've picked for 2024 is momentum. And this was actually a word that I was going to pick last year and I kind of set it aside. And I know a lot of you guys might be like, it's so cheesy to pick a word of the year. Like, and I get it. It kind of is. But I swear, like ever since I've started to do the word of the year, like I just, I connect so much to it. Like, I don't know what it is, but like, I just having that word, like, it just makes me feel so grounded with my goals. So I picked that word momentum for 2024. I just think that's a really like fun word. Like I just, I love just thinking about 2024 and like thinking momentum, like what I can bring into 2024 and kind of roll throughout the year. And I feel like that really well aligns with my 2024 goals. So momentum is my 2024 word of the year. If you guys do a word of the year, let me know what your word was for 2023 and what it is for 2024 if you've picked it already. But I'm really excited for that that word. I feel like I've been overdue to use that. I've been thinking about that one for a few years and I just felt like it never really fit. And then this year I was like, that is the perfect word for 2024. That's what I want out of 2024. I want my year to be filled with momentum for, you know, good things and good vibes and all that stuff. So let's start with my personal goals. So if you guys have watched my goals videos before, these are pretty much the same goals that I have mostly every year. They're not really that different. Um, so personal goals, my first personal goal is to go on a family vacation. This was my goal last year too, or one of my goals last year. Um, it isn't really a goal, probably not, but I just like to make sure um, that I'm going to do it because I feel like sometimes like finances and like stuff like that, it's just never seems like a good time to leave. And you know, that kind of stuff. So I just want to make sure that I go on a family vacation with my family in 2024. That's something that's really important to me. I have no idea where we're going or what we're doing yet. Um, we haven't planned anything. So, you know, we're, but we're going to go somewhere. So <laughs> we're going to do something. We're going to do um, something as a family. I just feel like that's very important. Um, as a child, my family was not financially well off. And so I literally didn't go on vacation ever as a child. Um, the first time I was on a plane was when I was 18 years old. So I just feel like it's very important for me um, to take my kids places. I want my kids to see things. I want them to experience things and the stuff that I didn't get to do when I was a kid. And I feel like that's, a, that's really common with parents, like that you want to give your kids experiences that you didn't have. And so it's really important for me. So I always have that as a goal, even though I know it's not really like a goal. <laughs> it's just kind of like something that I want to check the, check the box on. Um, so go on a family vacation. My second one is to read 20 books. So this year I've actually read like 34. I'm hoping to end at least at 35. I've really slowed down. Like I feel like in the beginning of the year I was doing really, really well. And then summer came and it was like, Err. and then fall came and it was like, ee, you know, like a little bit. And now I feel like the holidays, I'm like, like back down. Um, 
So reading is something that's really important to me. I love reading. I love being a good example for my kids because my kids have to read. And so I want them to see me reading too and not always just like scrolling my phone, which I feel like I am like always falling into the trap of like scrolling on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube or whatever. Um, so I really want to be a better example for my kids and show them like reading and good habits and all that kind of stuff. So reading 20 books. I think 20 is a good goal for me. I like, obviously I read a lot more this year, but I like to kind of set my expectations a little lower and then hopefully exceed them. So 20 books. And then my third personal goal is 6,000 Peloton minutes. So my goal for 2023 was 5,000. I should reach it. I'm really, really close right now. We're not quite at the end of the year when I'm filming this, so I do still have time, but I'm pretty close. Even if I don't hit it, I'll be very, very close. So I wanna make it 6,000 next year. I really wanna dedicate myself again to working out and building these healthy habits, but I try to stay away from goals that are like weight related or like specific, like, you know, I don't know. I just, I try to be careful with the fitness goals and make them something that is more about building healthy habits than like losing weight or losing a certain amount of weight or something like that. Because that's been like my whole life is like wanting to lose 20 pounds, wanting to lose 30 pounds. So I'm like, I would rather just build my goals around something that's a little bit more healthy and having a workout routine is a healthy habit that I really enjoy and like doing and I love my Peloton. So 6,000 Peloton minutes. Now I do actually count my walking and stuff on Peloton as well. So Peloton has a feature where you can like enter other workouts. And so my walking pad, I count that towards that as well. So my walking pad is something that's been really important to me this year. It's something that I got in September, I think, and it's been helping me a lot with just healthier habits in general. It's just being healthier, moving more throughout the day and stuff like that. I will link down below my walking pad video if you guys want to check it out. I did a whole video related to my walking pad and I still use it. It's still amazing. I love it. It just helps me get more active throughout the day. So highly recommend if you guys don't have one. And my last personal goal is to focus on eating out less. Obviously, I'm not, it's not realistic for us to say we're never gonna eat out. Um, we love eating out and it's something that's, you know, I like doing and so I'm never gonna take it away completely, but I do wanna eat out less and I wanna meal plan more. So that is one of my goals. I don't really have anything tangible around that yet as far as like how much I wanna eat out or how much I don't wanna eat out, but I feel like that'll kind of come like monthly depending on the month, obviously. The summertime is our hardest season because we are so busy with my son's sports and traveling for that and all that kind of stuff. But if I can just make it a really good habit like the rest of the year, I will be super happy with that. So that is it for my personal goals. Now let's get into my financial goals. So this is obviously one of my most exciting parts of goal setting because I love setting financial goals and I share them every single week on Debt Free Friday. So if you guys don't watch those videos, definitely check them out. But my financial goals for 2024, so I have five technically. One of them is not like a real financial goal, but the first financial goal that I have that's not like a dollar related is to track my spending more consistently. This is something that I've done I, I used to do a really good job at. I would say back when we were in debt, we did a really, really good job of tracking our spending. And this year I've just been like, I mean, I've been on budget mostly, but like I'm not tracking my spending consistently. And I feel like I've been seeing that in my budget. And if you guys watch my budget recap videos, you probably see it too. Like, wow, she's consistently going over budget. Like, hmm. <laughs> and then I sit there when I film those videos and I'm like, why am I going over budget? Duh, it's because I'm not tracking my spending. Um, and I like yell at myself every single month. So that is my first financial goal is to track my darn spending better. Yeah, track my spending. It doesn't have to be crazy, but I need to track it more consistently. I have a really simple um, Excel sheet that I use to track my spending. It's nothing special. It's literally just like, you know, date, place, amount spent, and then I built like a really simple little tracker on the side where I have it all. And the reason I do it in Excel, I actually prefer really to do it on paper, but that's just not realistic with my lifestyle with like making it easy to track. So I like having it on my phone. I just have my Excel in here or my, my Google sheet, sorry. Um, I just have my Google sheet in here. And when I spend, I'm gonna track it and I'm gonna do a better job in 2024. That is my goal is to track more consistently. So 
that is my first financial goal. That's not really like a huge financial financial goal, but related to finances. Um, secondly, we want to save up $15,000 to finish our basement. So if you guys have been watching my Debt Free Friday videos, we set a goal of 10,000 for the rest of 2023, which I'm hoping we will hit. And we're probably gonna need about 15 more thousand dollars to like finish off what we wanna do down there. Um, we're not doing anything crazy. We're basically just putting up walls and we need flooring and drywall and paint and all of that stuff to make like a rec area for our kids. And there is still a lot of unfinished area um, that we could eventually even finish as well. Like if we wanted to do like a second phase or whatever. Um, but yeah, even doing it that way, it's still gonna cost us about $25,000. And that's with like having family to help us with a lot of the stuff. Um, it's just really expensive. <laughs> I did not think it was gonna be this expensive exactly, um, but it is. so. $15,000 for our basement remodel. Next up is $5,000 for our emergency fund. So I talked a little bit about this in my debt recap video, which I don't know if I posted yet because I'm, I'm filming the, both of those videos on the same day. I don't know which one I'm posting first, um, but I think this one might be going up first. So you probably don't know about that yet, but I did talk about it in that video, which you guys will either have seen or see soon. Um, but we are going to increase our emergency fund by $5,000 just with inflation and like just life lifing lately and like inflation inflationing lately. <laughs> it just feels like we should bump it up. So we're currently at 20,000. We're going to go to 25. I feel like that's reasonable for us. I, I just would rather have more money. And with having three kids and all this other stuff, like I just, I want to have more cash. So $5,000. Um, and then we have our, well, I guess we, this is technically two separate goals, but we want to max out both of our Roth IRAs. That is $14,000 for 2024. So that is a big financial goal right there. We have all these financial goals we want to work on, but we're running out of money here. So um, $14,000 to max out both of our Roth IRAs. That is a huge goal for us to do again next year. We did that this year and it felt really good to have that money in retirement. And our final financial goal is to save $5,000 total to put into our kids 529 plans. So this is something that hasn't been a priority goal for us ever really. Um, but we do want to put aside $5,000 for our kids. We're going to split that amongst the three of them, um, to put into their college funds. So that is a total of, let me see, 20, 30, that is a total of $39,000 worth of financial goals. So that is quite a bit of money. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do all of that, but again, I like to kind of set the bar a little high for my financial goals, um, because I feel like it motivates me to make more money and <laughs> do more things to make more money. Um, so yeah, $39,000 worth of financial goals. That is a lot of money. Um, you know, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. I'm excited for 2024. I am excited to share this journey with you guys again. And that's all I have for you guys for this video. Those are my goals. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys have worked on your goals for 2024 yet. And if you have, let me know what they are. I want to hear about them. So that's all I have for this video. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.